Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart and today is August 26th, 2020. Wanted to spend a few minutes here uh, sharing some of the technologies that I've chosen to use for this semester. But I first want to start off by uh, saying that uh, this podcast is being um, being offered within a Microsoft Teams platform within our university and it really is intended primarily to reach out to any teacher, trainer, coach who's interested in not, not only practicing uh, English, but also thinking about ways that English can be part of one's, um, one's own teaching practice. So the idea of today is to kind of share some of the technologies that, that I've been uh, considering that I'm going to be uh, thinking about and using this semester with some of my students. Now, um, this semester I'm teaching a course in listening and speaking. It's designed for English language learners at an A or A1 to A2 English proficiency level. This is a, a beginner level, so a lot of uh, technology, all, a lot of the decisions that I'm uh, making around which technologies to use is tr to really facilitate helping English language learners at, uh, at a lower level. And uh, depending on the subject that you're teaching and also just depending on to the degree that you're going to be uh, implementing uh, English, this will depend a lot on the technologies that you decide uh, to use. If you're teaching another, um, another subject that's not English related, but you are planning on using to a certain degree, a certain level of English. Again, the technologies that you choose will need obviously to uh, to be a part of that decision making process. But for my case, I'm going to be primarily sticking with Microsoft Teams. And so if you're looking at my uh, screen here, I have set up a Microsoft Teams primarily for this course. And the course itself most if not all of the course content is going to reside within this space. So here um, I've got post, I have a section for files. So these are going to be files and folders that I'll be using to share course content with the group. Now the, uh, the options here along the top, I set this up automatically as a class, which then includes a class notebook, assignments and grades. And I'll explain a little bit here what I'm going to do uh, for uh, or, or in these areas, but I'm not going to be using the class notebook assignments or grades uh, here in this space. OK, and I'll explain a little bit uh, why that is uh, a little bit later. So for this class, I'm going to be using a lot Flipgrid and Flipgrid was bought out by Microsoft. So they are integrated very well within the Microsoft 365 platform. So here I have included a page where students can sign in using their university username and password. And um, I've also used uh, my username and password from uh, my university account, which makes it a lot easier for everybody. And uh, I have basically created a group within Flipgrid where all the topics will reside. So in this case, I my first topic, my first activity with my students was simply an introduction. And uh, here they have all responded. And uh, they're all listed here. I've got uh, currently about 42 students on my roster. And uh, this particular case, I think I have 38 uh, respondents. So uh, we still have a few that have not responded, but uh, you see here that they a lot of them have. And if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, uh, you can leave comments much like a, a text thread, much like a forum. You can make comments to the videos with another video. So, for example, in my case, I created this video. And you'll see here below different comments, OK? They're different um, video comments that are in response to my video. So this is, a, I think, a really nice platform for this particular class, because since we're focusing on listening and speaking, this is going to be one of the technologies I think that uh, we're going to be using quite a bit. 
And again, because I can integrate it into Microsoft Teams, it makes it that much easier, I think, for students just to um, you know, get into the platform. They don't have to have a separate username pa or, and password. It's pretty seamless in that respect. All right, so I have Microsoft Teams. I'm using Flipgrid. And the last main piece of technology that I'm using is called Clip Up, uh, ClickUp. Now, ClickUp is an organizational tool, and it also is an app that can be integrated to a degree within Microsoft Teams. So again, I'm trying to choose apps that are part of the uh, family of apps within Microsoft 365, just again, to make it as easy, as easy and seamless as possible for not only me, the instructor, but also the learners. So here I have a particular view set up and uh, the students can see at a glance which activities that we have done so far. So the whole idea with ClickUp at this point is for me as a teacher, I can plan my, my classes and here I can present very simply on a calendar view the activities that we do each day. So they can easily go and see which activities that we've completed and in this case, what activity that is coming up. All right, so click up and just so you can see what this looks like. Now with ClickUp, if you're not familiar with ClickUp, it's very much like Trello. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other services that's very similar. Trello and Notion, Notion.so. Um, they're all pretty much the same. But this particular service, ClickUp, is very robust. They have a lot of options, which is a good thing. But if you're just getting started, it can seem very complicated and overwhelming. And I'm still myself trying to, to get more familiar with the platform. But essentially here, you've got these different views, list, board, calendar. Notice this calendar is similar to what I have in, in uh, Teams. We have some documents. This is nice because you can actually create documents within your ClickUp space and a timeline. And you can have a lot of different um, types of views. These are called views here along the top. I think one of the basic views here that by default you begin with is the list view. And from here, you can obviously go into any of these. For me, these are all uh, lessons or activities or assignments that, that I'm gonna be applying in my classroom. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. And I'm not going to dive too deeply into ClickUp because it, it, there is a lot to it. But basically, whatever I do here is going to appear for the students in a simplified view here as a calendar. All right, so we have Microsoft Teams. I'm going to be using Flipgrid and ClickUp. Those are going to be the three main platforms that I'm going to be using for my listening and speaking class. The last type of um, service that I'm going to be using is Teacher Ease. Now, notice I haven't mentioned um, the virtual classroom. So for now, my plans are not to use the virtual classroom. Uh, this platform, Teacher Ease, is going to be used for the gradebook and uh, the gradebook and attendance. So I'm not going to go into this either, but basically this is a very easy service. And I'm really just trying to simplify what I do. Um, and it's I have found that using Moodle and trying to get around the grading, uh, it's just more complicated than it needs to be. I want things simple. And for me, this is uh, has been a simplified way to really offer, um, you know, some educative uh, experience for my students in a way that, again, is as seamless as possible. Now, one thing I will say that uh, my classes that I offer, I meet with my, my students every day, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 10 in the morning. So we have sessions very much like what I'm doing now, using 
the meeting feature within Microsoft Teams. And all of the uh, sessions are recorded. And let me show you one more thing. Since all the classes are recorded, I also have what's called a video archive. Again, these are all English language learners. So when we finish a class, it's likely that they need to review something that was said in class. Or maybe if, even if they miss a class, they have an option to go in and look at the video, the recording of the class. So here I've embedded a YouTube playlist and here they can access all the videos that are associated with this particular class. So my decisions for using these technologies is to really offer a variety of ways that my students can access course content and offer different ways that they can interact with themselves. And the good thing with uh, Microsoft Teams, these last two days, in fact, we had students um, or I had students go into different breakout rooms or groups here. They actually call these channels within uh, Microsoft Teams and students have been doing group activities, small groups in three to four uh, member groups. They have been completing tasks and um, interacting within Microsoft Teams, but in their individual channels. So what's nice about these channels that Zoom doesn't really offer is that each team can go in and they can meet, right? They can have their own online discussion. They have their own set of files that are associated with their own group. If they want, they can use OneNote that's also specific to the group. It's all integrated in to their space. Of course, they can open up any other type of file depending on the activity. They can even organize it around folders, but it's all integrated within their own specific group. So this is different than having the general tab, which is available to everyone. These individual groups also have their own designated space. All right, so basically that's it. That's what I wanted to share is some of the technologies here that, uh, that uh, I've chosen really evolve around trying to offer English language learners at a relatively low level, different ways that they can, again, access the course content. Uh, they know that they can contact me via the chat. If they need to send a, a personal message, they can send it via chat or they can also post here publicly. And, you know, we've had additional sessions like today. I still have a few students still coming in to my course. So today at two, I had a, an, an optional meeting for those who still had questions about some of the activities that we were doing. So I created this space here and offered a meeting. And uh, some students came in and clarified a few uh, questions or doubts that they had. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, these are the technologies that I'm using. And I'm curious what others are using, how they're making decisions around the, the types of technologies that are being used. And so I think we'll go ahead and stop there. Um, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been In the Classroom. It's an educational podcast, making teaching and learning more transparent. Uh, this is going to be a periodic uh, broadcast. Again, the intention is to create a space for uh, teachers, educators, um, anyone in training or coaching that uh, has an interest in implementing English to a certain degree into their classroom, or if they just simply want to practice their English, of course, this is uh, an opportunity to do so. So I think we'll stop there. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.